Okay, this is from Carlos Lobo. He says, I'm re uh, repairing exactly the same uh, tranny, but the shifter shaft seems to be welded to the case. And because I don't want to damage anything, I'm just curious if you know that issue. This is when you were doing the gearbox rebuild on the Harley. Shifter shaft. <clears throat> it, 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 it's, if he means the shaft that goes through the barrel, the yeah. rotating barrel, there's a lock screw at the other end. Yeah. There's a little tiny grub screw. You have to take that out, otherwise you'll just bust the case in. Or, or the, he could mean the actual, where the arm goes through, but that's just got a metal clip. It's spring-loaded. You pull that metal clip out, like an R clip. Um, do you want to go and get the case in? If you've got one to hand. Yeah. Right. If he means the shaft that comes through the barrel, yeah? Yeah. Does it see that grub screw there? So you have to undo that, and that goes in a, a recess in that shaft. And they can be a bit fiddly to get them out. But once you've taken that out, see there's a cover plate there. Yeah. You can either drill a hole in the end of it if it's really tight and bang it out. Um, if it means the shifter shaft there, see that clip there? Pull that, and that cog, the shifter cog, is on a square shaft. That should just pull straight out. And the only other one is there's a rod that goes through here yeah. to the outer casing that holds the actual shift the fingers, but they they normally they're never tight at all. Those they just come undone. Okay. So that's your three shifter parts. But if you haven't taken that grub screw out, you definitely won't get that shaft out. So it could be it's not welded in there that he just hasn't undone that. It screw could be covered it. in crap and you can't see it, or somebody burned it over, or something. At the end of the day, you can drill it out. You can drill at an angle and put another grub screw in there, um, but that's more than likely what it is, I would have thought. Very unusual that they get seized in. It's from Jeffrey Fox. Hello Ash, I'm working on my WL tranny and I got a repro kicker gear from Samwell and the lobes don't want to clear the triple bolts. Is there any advice on grinding the lobes to make it work? Or do I lock tight the trigger bolts out farther to get the kicker gear to spin freely? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking if it isn't shimmed up right, then it could be pushing, pulling the kicker gear out further i check the length of the shaft and just put it all together with just the kicker gear on it because you can reach inside yeah. and see if it will click in to the um countersunk bolts yeah um do we've had this before and um, if you could get no that won't work um You've literally got to do it bit by bit and see what is jamming. Because if you've got your spring in there, you've got your kicker bolt, goes on the splined end. Yeah, if the shaft, that should still, because even if the shaft's coming out further, it should still kick in. Um, All you can really do is check check the new part against an old one if you've got it um, and see if the lobes are much, much bigger. Um, I can't see that they'd have made them a lot, you know, a lot bigger than what they should be. Uh, would you say grinding the lobes would be the, the way to go then? No, no. What you could do is get some kicker bolts, some tripper bolts machined up with a, a bit of a shoulder on them so it'll hold them out further. You, I wouldn't want to really thread lock them, I don't think, because um, they take quite a beating. You, know, you want them down hard. But if you've got a tripper bolt, say you put a 30 second of an inch shoulder on it just to bring it off the casing, mm. that, that, that may work. Um, 
without again without seeing these things it's very very hard to tell um because if it was shimmed up wrong you'd imagine it would holding it all towards the back of the casing which would make your triple bolt going easier not yeah. not not worse um again without seeing it but <sighs> there's no reason why it shouldn't work unless the new part is actually physically wrong yeah um because the tripper bolts are just the tripper bolts the you know very unusual they wear in through the casing well i mean i suppose you could wind them out a bit and thread lock them and see if it worked you know if that worked then yeah maybe get some new tripper bolts machined up or a little tiny collar on them just to hold them off you know yeah, it's all I can suggest really without seeing it all. It's very hard to know. Okay. Uh, thanks for this video. As you work on this project, can you please share your thoughts on the differences in performance between big twins and WLAs? Uh, and there are 74 cubic inch and 80 cubic inch big yeah. twins. Yeah. Is there much difference? To be perfectly honest with you, I would clearly say yes, they're going to go a lot quicker than a WLA because it's engine bigger engine um but they are heavier um haven't really worked on enough of them to to tell you to be honest with you um i would you might find that your 750 picks up a little bit quicker on the revs um I mean, none of them are brilliant by any way or form but um probably haven't done enough of them, of them to comment he said i've got a 1943 wla mm-hmm do you know of anyone down under in Australia that can do what you do so good? <laughs> How do you go about finding someone who's good working on these bikes? Any ideas? Not really. It's only word of mouth and reputation, isn't it? As far as I can make out, you know, there's a lot of people doing. I mean, there must be a big Harley scene in in Australia, I would have thought. But whether it's all modern, I, I don't know. I don't know whether they're first place to look you know, Ooh, I'd say on the forums, internet yeah for Harley Davidson forums um, must be somebody out there doing it in Australia I would have thought yeah got to be in there well it must be it's just like where do you start I mean how do people find even yourself you know it's it's well, YouTube again and um, if people are posting on YouTube it's just yeah it's very hard isn't it to you'd imagine like you say a Harley Davidson forum though you'd find something in Australia wouldn't yeah. you I think that would probably be the best yeah. best place to start. Or New Zealand, maybe. I don't know. They've got a big bike culture, haven't they? John Jennings asks, I've just bought a car with a 420 Jag engine. Yep. You're a godsend. Many thanks. Would you know how to wire a toggle to override the auto choke AED, please? Yes. Cast your mind back. Cast my mind back. Right, it's live in first thing to check that the what they call an otter switch in the inlet manifold yeah it's just a bulb that goes in isn't a temperature one out of the radiator there's two different types they're exactly the same shape exactly the same one works in reverse to the other how would you know which is which um <clears throat> so what does it do it earths out and that fires the automatic choke or the starter car bretta they're called so when you turn the ignition on you should hear it go click and that is the starter carb shutting down yeah. um, to suck the fuel in um, so the minute you take the wire off the top of your otter switch that will open up no choke yeah so when the temperature gets up, so the otter switch is earthed out all the time, continuity, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's firing the choke. As the car warms up, something inside the otter switch moves, breaks the earth, car, starter carb turns off. Yeah. So basically, that live wire, yeah, that goes to the otter switch, mm -hmm. if you put a toggle switch on that and the other side to earth, that's all you need to do. Right. So you've got your, I think it's green and black, it might just be straight green goes to the otter switch you two wires that go to the starter carb 
one goes to the otter switch, one's a live feed in, yeah? So that, when it's cold, is to earth. So if you've got your toggle switch connected, the, the green wire that goes to the otter switch, one side of the toggle switch, the other side of the toggle switch to earth, yeah? So you can click it on and click it off. That basically overrides the, it doesn't override the starter car, but it means you can manually operate it yeah. as opposed to it relying on. But the first thing to check is make sure that that is the right switch in there. Very common fault. People put the temperature gauge switch in there, yeah. which works completely 180 <clears throat> degrees out from the otter switch for the starter carb. And that'll override the auto choke. Yeah, if you put a toggle, the green wire that goes to the top of the manifold with the single connection on it to the otter switch, one side into your toggle switch, other side to earth, and you can just flick it on and off then. Quite thick. Amino C. Mercado. He says, nice work. What GA steel are you using? And what is the thinnest GA that is acceptable for an exhaust? Most exhausts, um, if you buy a standard car exhaust, they're a millimetre, you know, thickness. Um, and for that kind of work, that's the sort of thing you'd use? Millimetre gauge, yeah, that's about right. Um, well, it, it, you can... It, we use metric now, but it used to be like 22 gauge, 18 gauge, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I can't remember what the conversions are now, but you can go down to sort of 0.7 of a mil. I mean, you get racing car exhausted, made mm, like thin. wafer thin, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, if you stick to a mil, it ain't going to burn out, it ain't going to rust out, you know. A bit harder to form and play around with, but, you know, that's, you don't want it to fall apart, so... Uh, Jesper Rasmussen says, any guidance to place the speedometer drive gear into the rear wheel on the Harley? What you've got to do is make sure where the back plate goes into the hub, you've got a spacer about that long. Now, if they wear out or the bearings are chewed up or there's a washer missing in the bearings, people put a washer behind the back plate yep. to stop the back plate hitting yep. the drum that completely bulges up the speedo drive because it's it's you've got a cog rotating that way and a cog coming in like that yep. it goes like that or like that so you've got to make sure that all of that is shimmed up right before you then place your speedo drive through onto the cog on the internal hub um, unless it's actually bent or something like that sometimes the hole can be quite tight because years of paint and everything that it goes through just file that hole out a little bit um make sure that your fork bracket that goes up isn't hasn't done that yeah uh, make sure that it fits on the slot in the speedo drive nicely um, generally it's bad shimming on the bearings between the back plate and the drum and that it'll just chew chew the gears up all the time Okay, Charles Wiley. This is uh, when you're working on the gearbox. Um, Seems to be a yeah. common thing, gearboxes, well, doesn't it, on Harleys? Take it apart, put it back together again. <laughs> yeah, we know that one. <laughs> Your videos have been so helpful, and my gearbox rebuild is 95% there. Every tolerance is spot on, and it shifts like a dream. However, when I install the shifter cam, number three, to the cam for tooth, it binds up and will not shift into third. Every other gear is perfect. Have you encountered this? So frustrating because I'm so close. Huh. Don't think they made different drums. I don't think they made a different drum. I think they're all the same. You don't get a different drum for reverse. That's why the three, the, the marks are on the bigger cog. Um, why would it bind up? Unless... Only on third, n number three. Yeah, going into third gear. Um, obviously, check the teeth, make sure they're not gammed up anywhere. Um, you can physically see... I mean, if your shifter forks are out, yeah? Mm -hmm. Shimmed too far one way or the other, when you rotate it into third, if it's butting out on the shifter fork, you'll never get it in gear. 
Okay. So it could be a shift of forks. But that would affect maybe just one gear, or would that? Yeah, because first and second are on one shift of fork. Okay, so that's a that's a pointer, isn't it? Are they? Yeah. Low. Second, one shift of fork. Third, yeah. So, it physically look. Take the top off the gearbox. Look down the hole. You can see as you rotate the drum into third gear. If that dog tooth that goes in is butting out, yeah, it, it, it's the shimming on the on the finger is wrong yeah. it, you'll never ever get it in gear so mm. so all it realistically can be is either the teeth are ground or worn between the shift of drum and your where you your number three and yeah. reverse are stamped in yeah um i would say by the sounds of that possibly the the shimming's wrong on the top gear shift the fork because you, you, you've got a cog with holes in, dog tooth goes into it. If that physically can't go any further, you'll never get it. It doesn't matter how hard you put it, all you'll do is bend all the shifter forks up. I would I would say that's probably reshim the top gear shifter fork, yeah. Uh, Jake Fox. Uh, my question is, can you show on camera how the backlight switch operates on a 41 WLA? And if possible, where it is wired to. 41 WLA. Is that going to be different from uh, 40 or 42? 40 was definitely different. Um, I mean, your basic brake switch wiring on a Harley 45 is you've got your feed wire to the coil, ignition feed wire, yeah. Now off of that, you then spur off of that, goes down to the brake light switch, which is just two terminals with a push-pull on a spring, out the other side of that to your rear brake light. That That's that's the basic wiring. Um, I don't think it's any different. And you've got green wire coming in to the left-hand side of the coil. Another green comes off, goes down to your brake light switch, yeah? comes okay yeah comes out of your brake light switch yeah and if it's a military one it then goes back into the switch gear to make it black out or not black out yeah yeah and then basically feeds back down to either your standard running light or your blackout brake lamp but if you had didn't if it's not military then it's literally green wire down to the switch red wire out to your rear brake light but if it goes back into the loom it, it, all it is is the switch gear to make it blackout brake or, or normal brake yeah um, if he's having if it is a blackout model one then it'll be in the switch because they're just a, when they get buggered up and rusty and worn out you know but you take it all apart clean it all put it all back together yeah the easiest way to know is if, if obviously trace the red wire out of the brake light switch if it goes back in the loom up to the top then it's probably a seven pole switch if it doesn't it's probably a five pole switch and it just goes straight back to the brake lamp okay yeah yeah it's a basic basic wiring as such on those but it does it does get a bit complicated when you get into all the blackout stuff blah 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 all you've got to do is bolt everything on the switch where it should be um and hopefully it all works you know if you look at the wiring diagrams in these so two wire cable look ding 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 red goes back up picks up on there but if you i don't think it's in this one hold on right that book yeah that tells you all your numbers of the switches, yeah? So switch position number one, look. Switch terminal, three wires connected, black wire from blackout, marker lamp 24, tail light cable, green wire from blackout, tail light 22, single wire direct from blackout headlamp as shown by dotted line, blah, blah, blah. It goes through every single bit of that wiring loom and where the wires go and what they equate to. So if you follow that, 
you literally can't go wrong with them yeah. as long as your switch is working properly yeah it, it, that's your best way of wiring up one of these up so you just literally read that look on here so basically because look it tells you black wire three wires connected black wire from blackout marker light 24 so that one there you know the black wire from that number 24 goes to position one yeah green wire from blackout tail light 22 22 that should double up for your spare wire spare blackout break that goes to there so if you follow that all the way through logically you can't really go wrong 